So, Jan already knows about uh, our uh, initiative to, to put uh, the IoT stuff in uh, a bit different perspective. I will be talking just about uh, a special uh, slice of pie of uh, um, Internet of Things, which is uh, not the usual uh, uh, Gartner graphs and uh, and other stuff they uh, they're making with uh, numbers with a lot of zeros. I will be talking about uh, the the internet, which is not exactly the stuff you are doing. The first mile I will talk is non-IP protocol. So there will be something not related with the traffic routing and the stuff like this. Uh, something about the, the Xiris Institute. We are basically uh, uh, a community. We started with, uh, with wireless LAN in the uh, area of Nova Gorica, uh, offering the free access when there, will be, there was no free access or an easy uh, reachable uh, high speed internet access. Uh, we have, or one of the, our founders, uh, found the Nova Gorica dot uh, EU, which is hosting about 450 access points, uh, ranging from uh, hospitals, uh, public areas, and uh, special the 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 they are offering the coverage in the rural uh, areas of the region. After after the the successful deployment of the IoT based on the Wi-Fi, which is usable only where the, the range is rather close, and uh, the places they have no problem with the, with the power supply. So let's define the IoT, the, the things part of IoT. I will talk about uh, something a bit different. Then we'll be um, go through the some technical stuff of LoRaWAN. Everybody, anybody here knows something about this protocol? You can take a coffee. Thank you. <laughs> uh, then why uh, was the LoRaWAN introduced? Uh, how we are doing stuff with this protocol? And later on, because my presentation, the first version of presentation was much over, over time, uh, I was offered to, uh, to host a BOF session later in the evening. We will discuss the use cases, some uh, hands-on stuff, and, uh, and the things like that. So the, the specification of the IoT, the three parts of the IoT will be uh, stuff that will work for, the, for everything starting with smart and uh, city, agriculture, energy consumption, whatever, parkings, whatever, uh, area you will, you think you can do smart the first thing that uh, um, normally difficult to achieve with the standard Wi-Fi communication is the range Wi-Fi if it's not sim uh, various points to point communication is difficult to to achieve uh, with a simple omnidirectional antennas. So we have a problem uh, when we, uh, we have probes, sensors, or uh, actuators which are out of reach. For example, over the three kilometers of, uh, from the access point or base station. 
The second point is uh, that the, the devices uh, hosting the sensors and the measuring the, the, the physical conditions of something uh, should be very, very, very cheap because we are talking about the deployment of several thousands of devices. So the, normally the constraint is about having a, a radio part, radio component of the sensor costing less than $9. After that, there should be very, very nice to have no, nothing or, or nobody to pay for the data transfer, if possible. So the total cost of ownership should be a bit, uh, a bit lower, if not zero. And the third important part is the energy consumption. Uh, having uh, hundreds of devices around uh, the rural area or uh, garbage bins uh, will be difficult to, uh, to maintain if the battery uh, would last only, I think, uh, for the Wi-Fi based device, it will be something around three or four weeks. So you, you have to, to design something uh, capable to, to work without a uh, photovoltaic panel because not every location is suitable to, to power your device with the with sun energy. So your uh, device will, would must be very, very uh, energy saving. So the, a couple of years ago, I will not say <laughs> some, some, the, they, uh, the Laura Alliance uh, united a lot of players in this area of communications uh, in order to put a standard on the longer range communications. The low ray stands for long range. The long range or LP1, low power wide area networks, is specifically built for Internet of Things uh, with the modern, modern protocols and modern approaches. The protocol is only a couple of years old, so the best of the best is inside, we hope. Uh, what is the, the point of strength? So, uh, they were very low in uh, energy consumption. They cost a couple of uh, dollars, not only in uh, big quantities. And uh, they have a uh, and then there is a, there is not the high data rate. They have a data rate which is suitable to 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 transport or to communicate to communicate uh, sensors network data, which is not exactly something you need in uh, several samples, several measurements per second. The competition, which is not threat, right, the competition is the traditional cellular network uh, technologies, which are, uh, of course, doing a lot of very great job in order to, to implement and deploy uh, protocols like NB-IoT or CATM-1, which are a bit different. The point is that uh, uh, the existing infrastructure can, uh, can offer the instant coverage of the areas and they offer high data uh, transfer which is uh, something that uh, LoRa is not designed for. And there is the, another player which is a single, single uh, commercial service called Sixfox which is a great, great, great uh, solution for certain parts of the, the problematics. So the, something about theory, LoRa is uh, 
layer one. It's a radio part of the communication. Uh, normally, uh, it works on uh, 868 megahertz. By the way, any ham radio operators here? Yes. <laughs> so they know the, what I'm talking about. Uh, the frequency is uh, um, license free. So there are strict regulation about how to use this. The same stories uh, normally uh, forgotten for the 2.4 megahertz uh, gigahertz and the 5.7 gigahertz. Here the regulation is rather strict. In order to accommodate thousands of uh, devices on the same uh, radio specter without a problem and without an interference. So it works very well in uh, urban uh, environments also because it bounces very, 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 very well. You do not uh, need any direct line of sight in order to, to get a communication. The, the power is about 25 milliwatts maximum which is several hundreds more than your cellular phone. Uh, this is made just to, to save energy for the transmi to radio transmissions. And uh, the data rates are slow. We are talking not in uh, units that you are accustomed, but we are talking about 300 bits per second to maximum of uh, 50 kilobits per second. So nothing is suitable to stream video, for example. There are a couple of things that, uh, that are based on the standardization. The, um, the modulation of signal is a spread spectrum. So the signal is very, very, very large. The, the receiving the signals are very low, but the, in order to, to extract the information, there are uh, good proofed algorithms to guarantee even the, mm, the, the best results with the interference or the, the, the un, um, uncoordinated traffic on the same frequencies. So after we, we saw how the LoRa is uh, defined, enter layer three. We are using the same, uh, the same uh, system as the other, other technologies that allow us to communicate. And uh, the point practically is that the LoRa goes from the end nodes to the concentration. This is the radio part. From here on, we are talking internet, IP, with routing and something like that. The, um, the main uh, difference between the LoRa is, uh, and the cellular networks is that the nodes are not uh, attached to the access points, or in this case, they are called, uh, called concentrators or gateways. Uh, they are using broadcasting. One node simply sends the packet around, and whichever gateway intercepts it, it routes it to the network server and the rest of the uh, infrastructure. The organization that uh, coordinates the, the, the standard and, uh, and uh, all the dirty, dirty regulation is called LoRa Alliance. And uh, they are the, um, for practically uniting all the, the big players in the field of IOT parts. About uh, LoRa terminology, we have an end device called uh, node or mode is something like this. This is a microclimate node having a thermometer and a 
measure also relative air humidity with a small antenna and uh, it's powered by two AA elements. With the uh, transmission interval of 10 minutes, the battery should last about three years. It's not highly optimized, but it works. Let's cut the gateway. The gateway is the device that uh, have a radio part, intercept the transmissions, and send uh, the data, which is encrypted to the rest of the infrastructure. I have here a very cute soap box, which is actually a full-fledged uh, LoRaWAN gateway for very funny cost of, uh, let's say, 100 euros. Uh, this is an uh, indoor version, but uh, you can easily get lost of the, of the casing and put the external antenna, IP67 uh, case, and put it on the roof. So the rest is the network server, which is not exactly just one server, but a couple of services. Uh, then we have a application part, which is normally user, uh, you know, on user premises, and there are two uh, two kind of up uplink message and downlink message because the the uh, protocol is bidirectional. Measurements goes up to the gateways and the uh, commands. For example, for opening, uh, something is going uh, down. The, just in order to say that the commands, so the downlink, are something that cost in cost in terms of uh, uh, spectrum usage. So they are normally limited to to ten commands, or ten downlinks per day. So it uh, the, the lot of one. For, on certain uh, providers are uh, restricted for doing uh, something like uh, SCADA or, or, uh, or emergency services. There are three uh, classes of uh, transmitting data. I will just uh, do the, the first one. Highly optimized uh, protocol means that uh, the, when the node wakes up, makes a measurements, transmit the data, then go to sleep for a second, listens if there is something uh, coming down, if for incoming down mes uh, downlink messages, sleeps again for a second, wakes for the second time, if there is no nothing to do, goes to sleep for the interval that is programmed to, uh, to the node. Of course, one of the functions that is uh, implemented that way is that you send a new interval to the node uh, when it, uh, it wakes up uh, in this kind of measure. So you see, as you see, there is a, a big latency that could be hours, for example. You will need to take a, a long uh, lunch if your uh, node will wake after two hours if you manage to uh, misconfigure something. The B and the C class, uh, the new weather is the scheduled to receive uh, windows, which are normally synchronized with uh, GPS, and the class C that uh, is always listening to the commands. The another system to lower the, you know, the power consumption is the, the fact that the node and the network can communicate when the node is too loud or uh, the quality of signal is, uh, mm, is adequate to, to lower the data rate, to, to lower the SF, the space factor. And that means that, uh, for example, 50, bits, uh, 50 bytes can be sent with the SF7 a very fast, uh, in about 60 milliseconds, when the, the concentrator and the node have a clear and good path for the radio signals. 
In, on the other hand, uh, for uh, guaranteeing uh, a communication, the device and the, the network could um, mitigate other parameters, for example, up to SF12, that means that the same 50 bytes package will need about a second and, and a half uh, of transmission in order to, to send the data on the expense, of, of course, of energy. I will not uh, talk about uh, addressing. There is nothing to do with IP, and no IPv6 also. So that's a lot. <laughs> the, the addresses in the, uh, the over-the-air activation are combined with the key exchange for the encryption. Uh, say, that said, uh, we have two, two layers of encryption. For example, uh, the node talks only to the, the network, uh, which, is design, uh, which is configured for, and uh, data uh, sent can be only decoded with the proper application key. So the provider cannot see the data and other providers cannot see the addresses of the nodes inside. So what we need? We need a problem, for example, uh, something related with uh, precision agriculture, when we know that there is no coverage for the Wi-Fi devices, uh, neither for the, for the traditional data operators. We need some devices, a network. Uh, it is sufficient to have account to the, <clears throat> to the provider or to put uh, an infrastructure yourself on the place. You will need some programmer skills not necessary at this point the click solutions and of course it's good to have a community uh, in order to to speed up the deployment so the community part is something that uh, a couple of years uh, started in uh, amsterdam uh, a couple of very talented and uh, motivated guys put the newly designed and uh, defined LoRaWAN protocol to the, um, to the servers. They are publicly accessible. So they, are, they started uh, to build a network which is open and free to use even for commercial uses from the bottom up. So the people put the gateways on their roof and uh, I think that a couple of months they covered uh, Amsterdam with 12 gateways just for having a, uh, a perspective. Barcelona could be and is uh, covered with only uh, three gateways. So there is no problem to, to put several thousand devices on the network without having a problems with the the capacity or the or the coverage. So you, mm, the the things network is uh, organized in so-called communities. Communities are normally uh, groups of people which share the same uh, same idea of deploying Internet of Things using Loravan, and they they've just uh, uh, make the network grow. So there are some numbers. In last year, there were 3,903 uh, 3, gateways active. And yesterday, well, no, today was 7,000. The coverage is, uh, in, in Europe, especially in the northern part of the Euros, is very, very, very thick. So there is no, no problem to have a uh, to have a project which relies of, some, of free and open infrastructure and put it into work. Like a proof of concept for education uh, 
education or even uh, for business. The community, in terms of the, the game around the Things Network, uh, is declared official when you satisfy a couple of a couple of things. Like uh, you need to have eight members, two gateways, uh, one communication uh, uh, media channel, or uh, or something that. Uh, or some system to expose your activity. After that, you you can declare this official and have a, a, a great support for the authors directly of the of the things network. So, uh, BF session will be around gateways, hands-on devices, hands-on and use cases which are uh, very, very interested, uh, interesting and uh, I hope you will be interested in.